Hello. I'm Bill. He's Bill. <laughs> Got very quiet. All so uh, my name my name is Eric Wessoff. Uh, I'm the editor in chief of Green Tech Media. You haven't heard from me a lot uh, over the last couple of days, and that's deliberate. Um, and I, I want to make at least I want to start out with a confession for you. I'm a deadhead, and I've been to a hundred Grateful Dead shows, and I've seen the back of Bill's head at many of them. It was. Now, why would that be a confession? <laughs> that should be a badge of honor. Yeah, like having, well, this like is having going solar out, panels th on your roof. This is going out to the world, and being a Grateful Dead fan has a whole set of subtext behind it. Anyway. All um, good. Uh, so like solar, all good. We're going to be talking about solar. We're going to be talking about the Grateful Dead. We're going to be talking about marketing solar as well. And uh, on the subject of, of, of marketing solar, uh, Kelsey Pegler the third. Uh, junior. junior. Um, I'm the third. <laughs> okay, that's it. My son um, is the third. Is the and my dad wanted a fourth, this and is, I let him down. You can see how down. this is going to go, right? Um, so, uh, you know, let's just roll the film to start with, okay? Oh, let's we just, have a let's film. Just play that, let's just play that video. So, feature start. film? Yes, it's at the Walton Residence. So that's a... Uh, I'm Bill, and welcome to our hometown. <laughs> San Diego is my hometown, and I am the luckiest guy in the world. And well, the biggest no-brainer in the history of the world is solar energy. The second biggest no-brainer in the history of the world is living right here in San Diego. <laughs> uh, he has a 12-kilowatt system on his roof. It's composed of uh, 43 LG panels. It uses Unirac racking. Um, uh, Quick phase. mount sealers <laughs> and, 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 and phase inverters. Wow, all right. All right. And, and, and we're not going to ask him why he went with end phase versus an, another optimizer solution. Um, because end phase gives me the real time analysis as to what's going on. And I know about my energy use all the time. And if there's ever a problem, which there never will be, are you kidding me? <laughs> what Kelsey has done here in building this remarkable team. What is that you have in your hand there? It's a, a, a book that you uh, oh, have disowned. Um, I have disowned we that wanna, book. So we, we don't want this to be an ad for, for NRG, and we will talk a, a little bit about that later. And speaking of, of NRG and marketing, um, you know, Matthew McConaughey is also a spokesman for NRG, but we could not get him. Well. <laughs> and we're not allowed to say his name. Uh, is that true? Uh, and you said his name. <laughs> and the reason I'm here is because they wanted a young, pretty face. <laughs> So you've been, you've, been, you've been grilled, you've been worn down to a nub with technology and regulations and policy for the last couple of days. And we want to provide a little bit of, of lightness, but not just entertainment. We want, we want to be inspirational because um, at, sometimes we forget we're in a, a world-changing business. And it, it doesn't hurt to get to step back a little bit and, 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 and understand what we're really trying to do. So. Um, I, I want to, just in, in a serious note, because if you're a basketball fan, um, I want to read uh, John Wooden's four-paragraph handwritten letter to the um, Basketball Hall of Fame uh, Honors Committee. Forgive me. Dear friends, although Alcindor, that would be Lou Alcindor, Kareem, Kareem. Kareem, is the most valuable player I have had under my supervision because of the problems he created uh, for opponents at each end of the court, Bill Walton was probably a better all-around player. 
As a matter of fact, it is my honest belief that Bill Walton may have been the most fundamentally skilled of any center who played the game during my time. Uh, this is John Wooden talking. Um, some may have been better in certain areas, such as Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, Nate Thurman, uh, but I feel if all individual fundamentals on both offense and defense and all team concepts were graded on a one to 10 basis by qualified coaches, I believe that Bill Walton would receive the highest score. So. My, my, my worst suspicions have been confirmed. <laughs> Coach Wooden has truly lost his mind. Uh, <laughs> so, he no. used to tell me every day, he said, Walton, I used to think you were a good player until you missed that one shot against <laughs> Memphis. <laughs> um, so Kelsey, what, what, um, what, why did you decide on, on this gentleman as, as, as the face of, of NRG? So, so I entered NRG through acquisition about eight months ago, and I saw how competitive the softball league was, and I got an inside track that they were going to cancel it because of some infights. So I just took a bet that we were going to build a basketball team and, and thought that Bill would be the best uh, <laughs> person for that. But no, so seriously. And you came, you came into NRG through an acquisition of, of Pure Energy. Is uh, of, of Roof Diagnostics, uh, and then later Pure Energy okay. has been added. Which his got father started. Yeah. So together, um, when we entered NRG and, and the, our home solar group within NRG, we have a little bit of an inferiority complex because we deal in kilowatts and our company deals in megawatts and we deal in millions and they deal in billions. And uh, we saw no better way to both overcome that inferiority complex by getting Bill, but also we, on a very serious note in solar, we see uh, mainstream really being the target for, for our approach. And Bill Walton is larger than life in so many ways. And, and connects, mainstream as can be. Yeah, it's, and, and it's been uh, so fantastic. And, and Bill has been uh, more than we've asked for. And I'll finish by saying this. We spent a lot of time with our sales team uh, a few weeks ago. And when you spend time with this sales group, you wonder how they have so much energy. Um, partly, I think they've replaced their coffee machines with, with Red Bull <laughs> vending machines. And, and, the pro so, and I've always wondered, like, how do they do it? And Bill has just exacerbated this problem because he has more energy than they do, and they have a problem. So it's, it's, he's been a really awesome addition and uh, been the engine of, of our success. So, so I think and how cool is it to be a part of a special team? And that's really been the dream of my entire life. Yeah. Chasing it down, my parents are the most unathletic people you've ever seen in your life. Uh, they have no interest in sports, but they have interest in important issues in the world. They have interest in education and arts and literature. And what they gave to me as a foundation then spurred me on to chase what I saw as basketball being the most perfect game of all, where all you have to do is wait for the opening tip which then leads to solar energy, which all you have to do is wait for the sun to come up. And if, if you have enough property around the world, it's just coming in all day long because that sun just keeps shining and it's absolutely perfect. And as we, at the close of the conference, in basketball, when the games are often won or lost, at the very end, it's called game winning time. Now, the greatest player that I ever had the privilege of playing with was Larry Bird. And Larry Bird, at the end of the game, we'd be sitting there in the huddle, standing around our coach, Casey Jones, the most like John Wooden of any coach I ever played for. And he'd be looking at the clipboard, kind of figuring out what we're going to do and stroking his chin. And it was unclear because in that moment, the moment of truth, there's always doubt, hesitation, and indecision. And so Larry, who was on fire every game, Larry would reach in and if you ever look at Larry, his hand, his right index finger on his shooting hand, he took a softball on the end of it while he was playing at Indiana State in Terre Haute in his senior year. And the finger is just crooked as can be, and we could never figure out where Larry was pointing. <laughs> right? So Larry, as Casey is holding the clipboard, Larry reaches in and says, Casey, just give me the ball right there. Come on. And Casey then just he gets firm control again, like Jeff is trying. Eric, excuse Eric, me, is Jeff, trying so. to get. Sorry, it's okay. Everybody under six ten looks exactly. <laughs> <the same. laughs> Eric with a C, and I'm Bill with two L's. So, so Bill, you, you wait, do, so I got to finish the okay, story. We're at right, the game right. winning time. We're at the close of the conference, <laughs> and so 
Larry reaches and said, Casey, just give me the ball. And Casey looks up and says, shut up, bird. I'm the coach here. We're like, come on, Casey, it's OK. Larry's already got 40 points, 25 rebounds, 13. Minutes. We just need one more play. And Casey says, come on, guys. We're going to give the ball to Larry Bird right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then Larry was so good, like Kelsey, like David Crane, he would go out and tell the other team what the play was. <laughs> and it would still work. Yeah. So there you, are no secrets. So, so, Bill, you told me I could tell you to shut up. Shut up. Okay. Um, <laughs> you are like Coach Woodgate. Um, <laughs> You have a full-time job at the moment, right? You're, a, you're a, 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 a storied sportscaster. You're the most hyperbolic sportscaster in the world. You told me yesterday on the phone that this was going to be the most, the most exciting day that I would ever have in my life, is what he said to me last night. And That it, didn't turn out. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. do, have, yeah. Yeah, you we'll do have you do have a full-time job. I'm busier than I've ever been. If you don't know who I am, you can go to my website, or you can just call up our son, Luke. I'm Luke's dad. And uh, my website is... BillWalton.com. I am busier than I've ever been. I'm happier than I've ever been. And I'm healthier than I've ever been since elementary school. And because of the things that are driving the solar world, science, technology, engineering, I have a chance. I have a chance in my life to keep going. I have a brand new spine. I have a brand new knee. The spine is coming up on six years old. My knee is coming up on two years old. And it has given me another chance. And when I was on that floor, and I was going to kill myself because my overwhelming, unrelenting, and debilitating nerve pain that was just radiating throughout my body, I could only describe it as being submerged into a vat of scalding acid that has an electrifying current running through it, and I could never get out. My life was over. When I was lying on that floor, I kept asking myself, what am I going to do with the rest of my life if I ever get up off this floor? And that's why I'm here, because we are in the battle of our lives. We are in the battle of survival. This is the biggest challenge, the biggest issue that we face. And we cannot lose this game. We need everybody. We don't need, we need more than Larry Bird. We need more than Michael Jordan. We need more than Kareem. We need more than John Wooden. We need everybody to buy into this critically important battle that we're fighting. And just think when you're really up against it, and you're about to quit. Just think of one of the great innovators, one of the great dreamers, one of the great visionaries, one of the great navigators in the course of human history, Captain Cook. 1770, he discovers Australia. And they're going up the east coast of Australia, and they're stuck, and they're trapped, and they're all there by themselves, and it's just them and their boat. And they're caught inside the Great Barrier Reef the size of Texas, and they have no idea how to get out but they've got to keep moving. That's the nature of life. And so they come up to this big rock outcropping, and they get off the boat because they're going to climb up on the rock and see what to do. And the place is just covered with big monitor lizards, lizards as big as Eric. Unbelievable, just tongues coming out everywhere. And they fight through the lizards, and they climb up on top, and they see a way out through the Great Barrier Reef. And they're going to take their boat. So they race back to the boat. They got the plan. They got the vision. And there's a gap right through the reef that they know they can make it. And right when they get to the front, the wind dies, and it all stops. And Captain Cook, the great leader that he was, he commands the men to the oars. Because even though the wind had died, the current was still going. And it was going to push that boat right up on the reef. And they were all going to die. And they had no choice. And they had to go to work. 48 hours on the oars with never a break. They just kept going, and the captain was just beating out the pace, much like Mickey Hart and Bill Kreutzmann for the Grateful Dead, just driving that train, <laughs> making it all happen. And then at the point when they're all about to just give up, it's too hard, we're not gonna make it, we're all gonna die, the wind came up, and bam. Just like the sun came up this morning right here in San Diego. <laughs> so don't ever think that it's too hard out there, folks. You can get it done, don't give up, we can win this. What was your question there? Yeah. So, so I just want everybody to know how, how real Bill is and how real uh, he is always. So with our 200 and some odd, 240 sales representatives, he gives them his personal cell phone. And he, he literally tells them, when you're at a kitchen table and you need somebody to help close, 
called <laughs> Mr. Walton. And the, so uh, the a few lowering, have taken him up on the call. customer acquisition cost. <laughs> 619. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> 890. Oh. <laughs> 908. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the luckiest guy in the world. All right. Mm -hmm. um, can you, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want, can you tell us a little bit about the, um, the construct, I know this is a mundane question, but about the installation on your roof and how that went and, and the process, if there were any glitches, if it was. Uh, I'm just so glad that Cortez, our dog, Cortez, the greatest dog in the history of the world, <laughs> did, did not get out. Okay, because all right. It's, it's a big house. It's one of the oldest homes in San Diego. It does not have a regular roof. And Robert Bressler, our guy here in charge of installation, and he was just brilliant. He was out there and he was climbing all over the place and up and down and all over the roof. We don't have just one roof surface. This is a house that was built 90 years ago and it's been added onto many times. We've been there for 35 years much to the neighbor's dismay. And all, all of a sudden, music Robert Bressler up. shows up, and it's like Leonardo da Vinci, and it's like Michelangelo, and it's like, oh my gosh. And then they put all this great stuff up there, and then he said, Bill, you just gotta turn the switch. And I turned that switch on, bam! It was pretty much like a, a Grateful Dead star of, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, birthday and um, good love. One of the things, <laughs> one of the things, I'm having my own sets of flashbacks, by the way. Um, one, one of the things that's powered in Bill Walton's house is a, a Meyer sound system, is that correct? Absolutely, John and Helen Meyer, you know, th this whole crowd, this whole audience, your lives, innovation, science, technology, all the things that I'm totally into, all the things that are gonna save us, it's already saved my life so many different times, it's gonna save the world. And you know, this whole sense of how we're gonna get to the promised land. You t the, the theme of this conference is marketing and to see what John and Helen Meyer have done here because John and Helen Meyer are friends of ours in Berkeley and they're San Francisco folks and in the, in the 60s they come walking out in the middle of the night of a Grateful Dead concert and, they're, and they look at each other and they're just teenagers in love and they look at each other and they say, that sounded awful. <laughs> and so they went back to their home in their garage in Berkeley and they started Meyer Sound System, which is the number one sound company in the world. That and might to be, able be to a non-hyperbolic moment. And, and, okay. and to walk in here, go to the, it, their offices are on San Pablo Avenue. Just go in there and tell them you're friends of Bill's. And just walk in, they'll give you this tour and the constellation and the, and the theater that they have. And, and they, they do all the big tours. They do all the concert houses throughout the world. And to walk in here to the Hyatt Hotel and to see these Meyer speakers, speakers right up here, just absolutely fantastic. And if you believe, if you believe that you're not capable of getting something done, that you're too small as just one person, or your company is not large enough, it hasn't scaled up enough to get it done, if you have that doubt, hesitation, and indecision that's always there in a the moment of truth, you've never spent the night in bed alone with a mosquito, because <laughs> that sense of, Oh my gosh, this little tiny thing, little old me. And we talk about the marketing, we talk about John and Helen Meyer, we talk about the, the Pegler family and all they're doing and what David Crane has been able to do. When we grew up, we never believed that anybody like David Crane could be in a position of power that he is in today. Kelsey, 32 years old, just getting started. And the vision and the, it, it, Incredible sense of doing the right thing. Yes, economics, critically important. The moral and ethical positions, the willingness to, to take a leadership role, to be able to stand out in front. And that's why, why Eric, with a C, is carrying this book that, no, that's not, I brought you a couple of books that will hope, hopefully carry you All right. to the promise. We're like Oprah, here. oh, Grateful Dead. One is, <laughs> I wrote the foreword to both of these books. One is The Marketing Lessons of the Grateful Dead. <laughs> and what every business can learn from the most iconic band in the world. All right. The next one is <laughs> Dead Letters, which I also wrote the foreword to. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm proud of those forwards. I, I'm familiar with both of these. I'm, oh, you I'm, are? I'm, I'm kind of. Okay. Have but to the say. sense of how people, people change the world. And that's why I'm so proud to be here to be on this team and to be in this space. 
because this is the biggest no-brainer in the history of the world. All right, he has a tagline that he's given us for that, and uh, you, can, you can use that. Uh, it's not trademarked or anything. Oh, it actually is trademarked, I think. I saw, I saw it. Uh, We're rooting for the industry, okay. so. Okay. Okay. Good, good answer, good answer. We're on the same team as that goes. When Use we it. win, we're interested in everybody winning. That's right. We're, you know, this is, Martin Luther King said it best. We may have all come here in different boats, but we're all in the same boat now. And if we don't work together in the political and policy fights that we're going to be in everywhere, because it, it's never easy. If it was easy, we'd all just be sitting over at my house. We'd all just be over here at Mission Beach right now. You know, I'm looking forward to the people like Goal Zero who can give me a, a, a bicycle helmet or a bicycle jersey that has the solar panels in it so that I can be charging my phone while I'm riding my bike and charging my lights for when it does get dark out there. Goal, Goal Zero is another company that was acquired by NRG and in the uh, spirit of uh, journalism, they also had an enormous uh, recall of late, so, sorry. Um, well, so, so in the spirit of, uh, of, of talking about how awesome their products are, I will say that Goal Zero has some of the coolest things you can uh, create, and, and a short um, point, we have ha so much success now with the tangible items that are Goal Zero at the kitchen table while we're talking about this intangible uh, PV solar system that, that's going to go on a roof. So there is um, a synergy between the, the Goal Zero product and, and, and rooftop. It's fantastic. Okay. Solar everywhere. That's what we want. Yep. I want solar on my TP. He has a TP. Want he wanted solar so panels Bi on so his Bill, TP, but they weren't able to put it on his Bill TP. Bill not only wanted like every inch of roof that could get a solar panel to get it, but he wanted his TP, a real <laughs> Bill Walton sized TP to get solar panels, and I, I still think he's mad that it, they're not paneled. But let's talk about how, <laughs> while we're in this fight, that everyone in this room, number one, has been helped by somebody else to get here, and number two, understands that risk and failure are part of the game of life. And so when we're going forward, don't ever get into that mindset of, we have to wait for it all to be perfect before we do the next thing. Think of it in terms of my spine. My spine requires me to do everything, everything I can to succeed to stay healthy, whether it's the chair I bring with me, whether it's the food I eat, whether it's the foundation I have in my shoes, whether it's the operations to replace the knee that was crooked because I was taken down when I was 14 years old to have the first of 37 operations, including two ankle fusions. And whatever it takes, I have to do that. And if you don't do that in your own personal health, your spine is gonna fail because your spine is like our mother earth. Everything eventually comes into that spine. And once your spine fails, the same way once our earth fails, it's over. There is no other chance. And that's why this fight is so critical. So get out there and what you have, keep pushing that, keep driving that. And you guys are, who are making all the financial decisions and the scientists and decisions about okay, the storage, what we're gonna do here, you got a battery? Bring it to my house. We'll use it. We'll get going. Because I know from my own personal life that it's not waiting until the end, until it's 100% perfect to get it done, but the incremental steps along the way. So Kelsey, do you keep him, are you going to keep him um, in, in industry to industry and business to business, or is he going to be unleashed on the public at large? So if you <laughs> have learned anything in whatever 20 minutes this has been, you're not gonna keep Bill Walton to anything. <laughs> and uh, we are just happy to be uh, teammates with Bill and it's, we're so reassured I, of it I every think day. Just, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, previous spokes, industry spokespeople in solar have been here. It's, we'll crowdsource that. Anybody? Who, who? Ed Begley. Ed Begley, Larry Hagman, Larry Hagman? Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson, all right, all right. Now, uh, I know Patrick her. Dempsey. I think we're doing much better than 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 <laughs> than, 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 than that. Yes. Um, the only other comment. I, I'm willing to stand up in front because I know the stakes, 
And once you have faced your own death, which I have, you realize that there's no turning back. And for those of you who are full of doubt and who are reluctant, uh, there's a song that I recommend uh, by Jimmy Cliff. Jimmy Cliff uh, in the song is, it's a hard road to travel with a rough, rough way to go. There's no turning back. My heart's fixed. My mind's made up. I'll never stop. And you listen to that song, and you just put it on repeat on your, <laughs> on your Meyer sound system. <laughs> You'll be ready to go. Um, in reading the book that, that um, Bill has kind of distanced himself, it was, he, it was written when he was young, it was ghostwritten. He has another book coming out from Simon & Schuster. It's titled... My Life with Eric Wesson. <laughs> <laughs> and it's coming out in a couple of weeks. It's coming out in a couple, it's a very short book. It's um, in the final editing process. It, uh, they asked for 120,000 words, I gave them 300,000, <laughs> and now we're negotiating. So when, on when Bill was playing with the, the, the Boston Celtics, uh, in, in this, according to this book, you'd think it was a very staid kind of conservative thing, but if somebody was coming in from the sidelines, I understand, according to this book, they would yell at him, just do something. Do something. Just get one, something done for do once, something in, your once in your life. This is right, okay. So this is Larry Absolutely. Bird. You're coming in off the bench, and, and and what was he say? What would he say? He would always say, "Do something once in your life, Walton." And after about thirty seconds of action, Larry would call timeout and walk over to Casey Jones and say, "Casey, you got two choices." You can take Walton out, or you can take me out. <laughs> but we're not going to continue this way. And Casey well, always did the right well, thing. Well, my point kept you in. No. Uh, my point. <laughs> my point was that, um, in in good spirits, if there's a if there's a final word for 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 you as you leave, there are two two or three panels after this. Don't 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 go just. I yet. thought this was the game winning. Yeah, yeah. We're the, going the, into the, overtime. There, there's a shot clock. There's a shot clock. Unfortunately. Um, You're not looking at that clock, are you? You can talk as much as you want, and it, it, it's up to them to get you off this I'll stage. I'll stay around okay. afterwards, sign autographs, take pictures, until the last person is gone. But just like Larry Bird said, um, go, get out there and do something with your life, OK? I'm trying. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. I, I think you. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Is that all you need? You just need that every day? I have the chance. I love to be challenged. And I, I love to argue. And one of the reasons that I admire Bill Clinton so much is that in 1994, when he was up against it, he stood his ground. And he said, OK, you want to fight? I'll fight. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to fight. What we have going on around the country with vested interests who are selfish, greedy, and don't really care about anything, other than their bank accounts, we all have to breathe the same air, and we all have to drink the same water. And the sense of being in this together, you know, you have a, a, a spectrum of life that, that measures happiness. On one end, you have anger, selfishness, greed that leads to, that leads to hatred. On the other end, you have pride and loyalty selflessness, the team, the commitment, the discipline and the sacrifice and the foundation that leads to ultimately happiness. But those steps of happiness, health, family, home, solar panels on your house, <laughs> and the dream that tomorrow's gonna be better. And when you have that linear progression towards the dream, then anything is possible. And I have that dream, but I wouldn't be able to have that if I didn't have the steps along the way. And just think of your own body as the earth. And I'm old enough to remember when they told us that cigarette smoking was fine. I'm old enough to, to remember when they said that, oh, small, you know, all that brown air out there, that's all fine. I'm old enough to remember when they said the worth of, that the world is flat. I'm old, enough to, <laughs> I'm old enough to remember when they said that the, that the sun revolved around the earth. And I'm old enough to remember when they said that fluorocarbons were all fine. Well, we have learned through education, through innovation, through creativity, through people willing to accept and take risk and risk failure, risk everything to stand up there and say, no, that's not right. 
and this group right here is leading that charge and I want to be a part of that and I'm willing to do whatever it takes you call me up my email is bill.walton at billwalton.com bill.walton at billwalton.com you call me up and say bill we want you to do this and then I'll ask Kelsey who will then ask <laughs> Who will then ask Eric with a C if that's okay. All right. Um, how is that for an inspirational palate cleanser? Um, I'm sure he has more to say, um, but we're going to, in the interest of keeping this thing going and finishing the game. Um, the game never ends. <laughs> just just so watch ESPN. Can we, have, can we have 10 minutes to swarm him? and then move to the next ten, uh, Do we want to have any questions from the audience? Does anybody have any questions from the audience to ask Bill Walton, please? Please. I've thoroughly please. confused all of them. Yes, sir. What's your favorite blue How many children do you have? Three. Which one's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> Never rank, rate, or compare things. Just whether they're children, championships, concert coaches, congratulations, enjoy them. Enjoy them all. And save the worrying about what's really important to what's going on here. Because this is critically important. And this, it, it's going to be a fight. And it's, it, it's going to be a hard fight. And, you know, there's, we're right. here to more, fight. More Grateful Dead or Bob Dylan related questions, please. Yes, any other questions here? Shyam. <laughs> you have to have the combination of great players, great coach, great ownership. They're working on all those pieces right now. And Phil Jackson is the key part. He's the one that gives them hope. And Phil Jackson is incredible. What he's done, and all you have to do is look at his track record. He's like Greg Popovich, Jerry Sloan, John Wooden, Red Auerbach, Jack Ramsey. Any great leader, there's never been a great player without a great leader, but that, that sense of being there to win the big moments. And that's what we have with all the different things that we're doing in this industry. We have the people. Now the question is, do we have the political will? The Knicks, they don't have the players. Do they have the political will? Phil Jackson can show them the way to the promised land. But you'll never learn what you don't want to know. From the leadership perspective, and that's what's critically important with this group here, it's not how or what you teach. It's who the teachers are themselves. And that's why I am incredibly proud as an advocate, as an educator, as an illuminator, someone willing to shine the light, I've got a solar system on my house. I'm willing to do everything like I am with my spine in my own personal life because you build from the bottom up. You have to have that great foundation. And the Knicks have been stumbling and flailing around for so long that they just, their foundation is a Patrick shame. Ewing broke my heart <laughs> 20 years ago. And Patrick I, Ewing is a Knicks. great player. This and was a great one of dude. the more exciting days of my life. So thank you. You were right. You were right. Thank you. You need Bill. to set your standards higher. <laughs> You got five, six minutes to swarm in. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, folks. Thanks for having us.